Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have an angle, all right? If you guys remember in the first chapter, in the first section, I'm sorry, we just talked about angles and putting them, remember graphing them, converting them between degrees and radians. And then we just worked on, and then what we worked on was finding like the quadrant it was in, right? So let's say I have an angle, which is 3 pi over 4. So I need to graph that. But now what we included were point, we just talked about points on the unit circle. So what I'm going to do is I need to graph 3 pi over 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my x and y axes. All right, and remember, we always start right here, right? That's our initial side, always. Now, we can take a look at, now what is it we remember about angles? We know that if I was to rotate my rays all the way halfway around, right, would be pi, right? And then all the way around would be 2 pi. However, we're looking at 3 fourths of pi, right? Or 3 pi over 4. So is that going to be less than? a half rotation or greater than a half rotation? It's going to be less than, right? So what I like to do is I like to break it up into your denominator. Since your denominator says force, then I could say, I could say this distance from here to here is pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 4. Does everybody got me? OK. So what we look at, if this is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi over 4, so the angle 3 pi over 4, which we're calling t, is right there. Right? So that's your angle right there. Right. Well, it looks like what? Oh, OK. So everybody understands how I got to the angle. Angle is the rotation right there. But ladies and gentlemen, what, our, what we're going to do now is we want to determine what our coordinate points are, or for our, our user, um, we want to evaluate our trigonometric functions at this point. So the next thing I want to do is I want to incorporate, well, what is, what is the point at, for this angle, what is the point on the unit circle? So if I was to create a unit circle, right, and we'll just pretend that the radius is 1, because it doesn't really matter. This angle extends infinitely, right? So it really, it, the radius could be anything. But if our radius is 1, we already know these points. These are easy. All right, but what we need to do is we, I want to figure out what this point is. Right? I need to figure out what that point is. Now, we worked on practicing the unit circle. We worked on how to find those points and where to come up with them. And one thing I noticed is that this is to the fourth. The fourth, it's, um, your denominator is 4, which is going to tell me it's going to be a certain type of angle um, or a certain type of coordinates. Now, the other thing I notice is it's directly reflected across the y-axis of this coordinate point. And this coordinate point was how many fourths? No, from here to here. One fourth, right? Or what we call pi over 4. Does anybody remember on our unit circle what that pi over 4 was? Right, it's 45 degrees, so the coordinate point right here is what? Right, the coordinate point at pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Since this is a direct reflection over the y-axis, what now becomes negative, my x or my y-coordinate? My x-coordinate. So therefore, this coordinate point is negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Yeah, that's what we learned in the beginning. All right? Is everybody following with that? So we're not done, though. So that's just, we first, finding the angle was 4.1. Finding the, finding the point on the unit circle is what we first learned today. But now the next thing I'm asking you guys to do is find sine, cosine, and tangent. So how are we going to do that? Well. Let's make this triangle here. So if I write out this triangle, right? we know that the hypotenuse is 1. We said that the distance x, y, right? That means this distance is how far? Negative square root of 2 over 2. And this distance is square root of 2 over 2. OK? 
Now, the one thing I want to talk to you guys about, I, we're going to go over this in chapter 4 or in section 4.4, but if I want to find what this, if I'm using this as my angle, all right, I can actually use the angle in this triangle. I can actually use, the, I can actually use sine, cosine, and tangent for that angle to actually find, to evaluate for this, um, for this angle. All right, it'll make a little bit more sense when I use a partic particular, uh, particular vocab word. But just to understand, if here's my angle, here's the coordinate point, right, that it goes through on the unit circle. So therefore, I draw a triangle, draw a triangle, so there's my triangle, and here's the angle I'm going to use, okay? So now, how do we do sine, cosine, tangent, right? Well, remember, sine of t, right? We know t is 3 pi over 4, right? So we could say sine of 3 pi over 4 is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So you could say square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1. And you could say the cosine is of 3 pi over 4 is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then you could say the tangent is opposite over adjacent. And I know I'm kind of getting a little chicken scratch as I go right down there. Um, now, hopefully, you guys can see something, though. What is anything divided by 1? Itself, right? Square root of 2 divided by 2. So then here, I have the same thing. Now, this one's going to be negative square root of 2 divided by 2. Here, I have the same number. That's neg um, ops opposite over adjacent. That's negative. Here, I have the same number. Square root of 2 divided by 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which is going to equal one. negative 1, because one of those was negative. The denominator is negative. All right? Now, here's what I want you guys to know. Does everybody follow me on that? Here's my x and y coordinate. All I did was I drew a triangle. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent was opposite over adjacent, right? OK. Now, for ladies and gentlemen, though, what is one thing that you notice here? Um, really, for my sine, which coordinate point did I pick for the sine? Out of the x and y, which one did I pick? I just really did the y. And for the cosine, which one did I pick? It really ended up being, or I didn't really pick, it ended up being the x coordinate point. And then for tangent, it ended up being y over x. All right? So what I'd like you guys to do on this second page, all right, when we're looking, when we're looking for finding the sine of an angle, of any angle, all you guys need to know is that the sine of t equals, what happens, guys, look it. What happens when I take my y, when I take my y coordinate and I put it over my hypotenuse? What am I always going to get? When I take this number and put it over my hypotenuse, what am I always going to get? That number, right? So it doesn't matter what y is. y over 1 always equals y. So sine of t, no matter what the angle is, is always just y. So you could have looked at this and said, oh, What's the sign of this angle? Look at the y coordinate of the coordinate point. The sign of this, yeah, you could have wrote square root of 2 divided by 2 over 1, but that kind of gets a little long, doesn't it? Just write, oh, what's the sign of 3 fourths? Where is the coordinate point? Right there. Sign is equal to y, square root of 2 over 2. Therefore, the sine of t equals, at, I'm sorry, cosine of t equals x, the tangent of t equals y over x. And then what do you guys think about the reciprocal properties? It's going to be the same thing. We haven't done a problem like this. But if I ask you the reciprocal properties, like cosecant of t, that's the reciprocal of y. So that's going to be 1 over y. All right? And then if I ask you for the secant of t, that's going to be 1 over x. And the cotangent of t equals x over y. So if I give you guys these, you're going to want to make sure you have these written down. So on that sheet of paper, make sure you guys have those written down. You also make sure you have them written down in your notes. Because if I give you a point, all you guys can do is just look at 
the point on the unit circle that corresponds to your angle and just pick the x and y coordinates to evaluate for your trig functions. Because you can draw the triangle if you want to and then do the trig functions like this. That's fine. But I think it's a lot easier if you can simplify it to this and then just pick the, the coordinates on there.